Cam's camshaft's Dwell's followers. Confused? Stay tuned to learn some more about these keywords. Welcome back to Design Technology On Demand. My name is Charlotte and I make weekly videos helping you to succeed in your design technology GCSE. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Cams are an essential element when it comes to working with tools, toys and machinery. For example, sewing machines, printing machines, engines to control valves and as said before, children's toys. So what makes up a cam mechanism? Well, it consists of two main parts. A cam which is attached to a rod known as a camshaft. This rod rotates, which is what moves the cam in a rotary motion. The second part is a follower. The follower touches the cam and changes the rotary motion into a reciprocating motion as the follower follows the shape, making it move up and down. Okay, so let's quickly recap. So we've learned what a cam is. A cam, which is a piece of material that could be possibly made out of wood, metal or plastic. A camshaft, which is the rod that is attached to the cam and makes it rotate. And lastly, the follower. The follower follows the cam outline in an up and down motion. So now that we have a basic understanding of what a cam mechanism is, let's see what happens when we change the shape of these cams. There are four shapes of cams that you need to know for your exam. We have a circular, a heart shape, a snail, and a pear. Obviously, these shapes are completely different, but how do they affect the mechanism? Well, remember the follower follows the outline of the cam, and all these cams have the slightly different shape. A circular cam is also known as the eccentric cam, used as an off-centered pivot. By offsetting that pivot, it increases material on one side of the cam and less on the other. By doing this, it causes the follower to move up and down or also described as rising and falling in a big amount. So hopefully now you're starting to develop a strong understanding of how these cams do affect the follower. So what happens if the pivot is not off-centered? To start with, the material would be equal the whole way around the cam. So then what happens to the follower? Well, nothing. As the camshaft rotates, the cam is spinning, but with no change in material, the follower stays stationary, which is also known as a dwell. With no extra material to force that follower to rise and no material reducing to causing the follower to fall. That leads us to the next cam, the pear cam. It's pretty obvious where it got its name from. With a pivot point centered within the circular part, this shape creates a dwell. Remember that means stationary for at least half a turn and then it gently rises and falls. This is how to make carousel horses to rise and fall. Let's compare this to the snail cam or sometimes known as the drop cam. Snail cams have an outline of a snail shape, hence being known as the snail cam. The follower also remains in a dwell for half a turn but then gently rises to a sudden drop. Something to note about this cam, it can only work in one direction. This is used on production lines to make regular holes or cuts in an item as it rotates and drops in regular intervals. We've looked at the circular, the pear and the snail cam. So how does this differ to the heart-shaped cam? A heart-shaped cam is called this because it simply looks like a heart. This cam doesn't have a dwell. Throughout its whole rotation, the follower is not stationary. The follower rises and falls steadily with a consistent change. Okay, before we move on, let's quickly recap those four cams. A circular cam has an off-centered circle-shaped cam, which is a steady rise and fall. A pear cam is shaped like a fruit and has a long dwell time with a rapid rise and fall. A snail cam is shaped like the shell. It too has a long dwell time with a steady rise and an abrupt drop. Heart-shaped cam is the likeness of a heart. This cam has no dwell time and a small rise and falls. And let's end the video by briefly covering the different followers. So we've learned the purpose of the cam and how that will direct the follower to move up and down. There are three types of followers that you need to know. We have the flat follower. This is a flat bottom that sits on the cam. These types of followers cope well under load, but aren't very accurate as cannot follow the profile of the cam well and don't cope with friction, mainly used within car engine valves. Second up is the point or knife edge. The knife edge follower has a tapered point that sits on the cam. These types of followers are very accurate and also don't produce much friction. However, a negative is that the point does quickly wear away. Leaving us with the final one, the roller follower. The roller follower usually has something like a ball bearing attached to the bottom of the follower. These do tend to be accurate, low on producing friction and can withstand a load. However, a negative is they are more costly to produce and it's possible the roller can jam. The key takeaways of this video are, we have covered what makes a basic cam mechanism. Start with the cam, the camshaft and the follower. 
we have two motions that are being used. We have the rotary as the camshaft is rotating the cam and we have the reciprocating as the follower is moving up and down. We also covered the four key shapes of the cams. So we have circular, snail, pear and the heart shape. We've also developed a strong understanding on how these cams will affect the follower from sudden drops to long dwells as well as gentle, steady and rapid rise and falls. And we ended the video with the three key followers from a flat follower, a knife point follower and the roller. Let's end the video with a question. Make sure you put your answers in the comment box below. Which cam gently raises the follower to then have a sudden drop? If you found value within this video, then make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. You may also want to check out some of my other videos. See you in the next video.